Hey there, here are the travel essential must-haves that I packed in only a carry-on bag for Europe this year. The first travel essential is for your flight to Europe. I packed a bag for the long flight over to Europe and in it, this is what I packed. I packed a pen in case they made me fill out a customs form but also for my journal because that's when a lot of creative thinking comes. I also packed an AirPod cord that is very strong and the magnet is also very strong. It did, did not get tangled mid-flight. If you fall asleep on your flight to Europe, it is essential that your AirPods you might be wearing do not fall out because it's going to be too dark to find them. I also had my charging cord and my block for my cell phone and my watch because for a long flight, I've already worn my flight, <laughs> I've already worn my watch all day and now I'm going to be wanting that watch for the entire flight. But really, you might not even need to wear that watch during your long flight at night to Europe, but then you might want it during the day when you land. So I also just have this three trifold thing and it was easy for me to use that to plug into the little outlet for the charging. Because of the dry air inside airplane and for such a long flight, I moved my eye drop from my liquids bag to that pouch in the boarding area after I'd gone through airport security. And I also took out my little bitty container of lotion because usually the airplane soap in the lavatories dries my hands out so much after one washing, they're like prickly. So I also had that in there. Come to find out the soap on this flight, I think was a moisturizing soap because I didn't feel the need to use that lotion at all. I also made sure to take Kleenexes because the ones in the airplane are super dry. One thing I also did for my trip to Europe is I swapped out my United States usual liquids bag for my really old one that is, I can barely fit anything in. And this is what saved me for packing in only a carry-on suitcase for Europe. I packed a shampoo bar instead of the liquid shampoo. And that's the only way I could fit my necessary liquids at a bare minimum inside this really small Europe sized liquids bag. Let us know if you've gotten away with using a quart sized bag in airports in Europe. It's not going over, that's the problem. When you return, you have to go through their airport security and many places in Europe have gotten really strict about how big your liquids bag is. It's like smaller than our Ziploc one quart sized bag. As a pilot's wife, we fly standby most of the time, but I treated myself to a first class ticket because I was going with other ladies to Europe and it's been like four or five years, so I deserved it. <laughs> but usually I only can pack in a carry-on and I did not want to risk my luggage being lost or having to wait for my luggage, even though the 14 women all checked a bag. But the first thing that I do when packing for Europe is I check the weather. I was so disappointed when I saw that there was 40% chance of rain every single day that we were in Belgium. But when we got there, there was not a lot of rain. So it's just a chance. This wonderful coat that has the shoulder backpack straps in it that I use, especially when I go to Europe, because the um, train system is so stagnant or hot, I wanted to be able to take this coat off, even though it's waterproof. Um, I forgot it because we took our other car that day instead of where I had put it in my regular car. So in DC, I had to buy a brand new coat on my layover, which I was very pressed for time. It is waterproof, but there are some things I did not like about it. However, if this happens to you, I would go to the place where I went, which is Macy's, because I knew they would have a, a wide range of coats for me to choose from. Experience is the best teacher, and what I learned from wearing this coat is that I should have packed a scarf. My green coat that's waterproof, it does not need a scarf because it comes so close to your neck, but this one did not. So when it was windy, I wish I would have had my scarf if your coat is like that, then pack a scarf. This one's great because these tassels do not get tangled even if you wash it. 
I am so glad that I had this like palm size travel umbrella. If you've watched my other video about Christmas markets, I also recommend that you just pack a cheap little thin plastic poncho from Walmart, the sporting goods section, not a pretty one, so that you can reuse it and then trash it before you get home. But I never used it because the travel sized umbrella was good enough. And when you're touring all day, you don't wanna take your umbrella and that if you don't have room for it. So I just was, I was fine using the hood or my umbrella and I had to get a bigger crossbody bag because I was going to be having to pack an umbrella for my daily use for the chance. This is the one I love packing because it is so super smooth like rayon fabric and the light interior. It fits my wallet and my reading glasses, sunglasses case and a little bit of cards if I do not want to take a wallet, okay? But I am so glad that I had this new crossbody bag. It was large enough for every single travel essential in Europe. Here's what I packed in my travel crossbody bag. And I did choose that one and this one because the straps are anti-theft, okay? They, of course, have the little locking zippers. But if you do not... I highly recommend these little bitty carabiner hooks that will lock, they will connect because of the two latches on each side, they connect your zippers if you don't want to invest in an anti-theft bag like that. But here's what I packed inside that travel crossbody bag that is anti-theft. I packed the umbrella in the bottom and then I packed my sunglasses, reading glasses case. And then I also did pack my wallet I think having a wallet was easier for me to get in and out of my crossbody bag instead of just sliding my visa in and out every time I needed to use the card. One thing I wondered about going to Europe in 2024 and beyond, I don't know if they are using contactless payment, like you can use credit cards, but since we were there for the Christmas markets, a lot of the shops in Europe will only allow you to use euros if you are only buying a small thing, like mulled wine at one shop. It, will, it was three euros and they would not let me use my credit card for that, so I did need cash. And here's our tip for traveling to Europe and withdrawing cash. We will use the ATM in the hotel or the first one we can get to, not in the airport because the markup is so high and no travel currency exchange places inside the Europe, in, inside the airport. The markup is just absurd. So my main focus when I landed was to find an ATM and I withdrew 100 euros because you want to do that at the beginning of your trip so that you can break that 100 quickly at your first night going to a restaurant when you spend a lot of money, for instance, or if you have to buy a coat over there because you forgot yours. I also had packed a baggie, like a sandwich baggie of toilet paper. I just unrolled a few rounds of my toilet paper roll when I got to the bottom of it at my house and packed them in several different baggies. And I just had one of those baggies in my crossbody bag every time we went out to tour. But every toilet was very clean and most of them had attendance that you did not have to pay, but it cost 50 cents or whatever those are called, the 50 cent coin, <laughs> 50 euro something coin. Uh, we did have to pay that to a person to use the toilet in a public place. But our travel hack for using the toilet in Europe is to find a fast food joint like McDonald's, Burger King, and buy a bottle of water there. And at the bottom of your receipt, will usually have a bathroom code in it on it. And that's the code that you will punch into the door to use their restroom. This wallet is RFID and you can research if that means anything or if it is really RFID. But one thing I do like is that it's easy to get your cash and your cards in and out. So if you have large fingers, that's a good wallet if you're trying to downsize. I also packed my charger and its cord because it's so easy to pack. It's easy to slot it into a crossbody bag pocket and I would use it near the end of the day, okay? Because I've been using videos from my phone's camera all day or taking pictures. And then my tip, 
if it helps, is to have the cord in an inside pocket that zips so you're not getting your fingers tangled reaching in. And then I also packed my chapstick and lip gloss and um, Kleenexes. And let me tell you, we were like this close to each other in a very crowded Christmas market times five. Um, wear your mask if you want to. If it makes you feel better on the airplane, wear it. There's no shaming and there are people doing it and lots of people who are not. So whatever makes you feel better. If you are a senior citizen and cannot walk down stairs, my travel tip is to make a note of that when you book your flight in another country or if you are connecting in another country's airport. I also packed antibacterial wipes if I was going to have like sticky mold wine on my fingers or food that got on my fingers, but I never needed it. I also had those for if there was no soap in the toilet. One travel tip for Europe is I had this pouch in my crossbody bag for Europe when I was going to need the cash or the Euro coins. However, what I found was easiest was to keep my larger bills in there and then have my Euro coins in the outer pocket. I did not realize how helpful having them within easy access was going to be. Because I was wearing a coat, the blush colored one, I was wearing the coat so it was easy for me to just get into that pocket for a few euros and not have my whole purse open or the pouch open where someone could run by and swipe it. I don't know, I felt a lot better having those coins in the outer pocket. Here are my travel outfit essentials that I packed for Europe. Inside the airplane, I wore water repellent pants that are not lined because I thought I might get hot. Um, you want them to be hiking pants, all right? I tried these from Amazon and I'll let you know here if I absolutely love them but you don't want them to be like super thin joggers because the rain, the wind was blowing rain on us. So I was glad that they were stiff enough to repel, but I want them to be soft and not loud when I walk. I'm also glad that they had an elastic waist. I don't know if my pair is available, so that's why I'm giving you an option. And then I also, okay, in the airplane, I knew we were going to land when it was supposed to be raining. So that's the, that's, an opportunity that some passengers can pack too much, all right? So I just packed a pair of thermal pants. The lady in Colorado hooked me up with these thermal pants. They're on Amazon, absolutely thin, but keep you warm to the nth degree. Mid-flight, I put those on, okay, because I didn't know if it was going to be freezing cold and raining while we were waiting on our Uber driver. I didn't know how long it takes over there now in crowded times to wait for a taxi driver. Here's a travel tip for using Uber in Europe. Number one, book it ahead of time, but number two, research that airport map. Tip number three is to go to the Uber website and they will give you clear directions. So then I also packed in my carry-on bag my black jeans and then also a pair of leggings just to wear around the hotel or to wear under my water repellent pants if I did not need thermals underneath there, if that helps you know. And those leggings and thermals are easy to pack. I also packed uh, cashmere sweaters and um, a thermal top, which is a, a thermal shirt. It's like crew neck, totally thin. I, it's a thermal, do whatever you want. Use my link. I'm not trying to make money from this. It is just so effective at keeping you warm. I also packed two short sleeve shirts because when you're cold outside and then you go into a restaurant or the train system, you can get really warm, which was the case in our hotel lobby like I said, we went with a lot of like 14 women. So after our day, we would meet in the hotel lobby. We were so warm in the hotel room and the hotel lobby and in the train system and restaurants. So I really wish I would have packed like two more short sleeve shirts. I washed my short sleeve shirts um, once while I was there. So the Tide sink packets are great travel essential for Europe because you can pack like, you can wash like four shirts in your sink with that one packet. 
As my travel outfit, I wore my waterproof boots in the airplane. I think only the brown ones are left, but there are options for you. Um, you can wear your tennis shoes, whatever's easy for you to get on and off, okay? And then also I had my black tennis shoes for if it was not rainy at one point. One thing I forgot is to pack like uh, flip-flops or like slippers. My feet were so tired of being in socks and um, trying to be warm all day that I, I wanted them to have air or it seemed like I just couldn't wait to take off my socks in the train even, but I didn't. <laughs> One of the people we were with, she took off her socks in the train, but I wish I'd packed like something where my feet could air out. Another travel tip for the airplane flight to Europe is to download Netflix. At your seat, the Wi-Fi or the um, airline entertainment that's in the seat back in front of you, it might not be working or the entire airplane's in-flight entertainment may not work. I also wanted uh, to bring my book and my journal, but I was so tight on space that I left my book. I don't like Kindles. Um, my eyes need to break muscularly from screens, so I like reading a normal, like a physical book. A very important travel essential that I'm so glad I packed for Europe in the winter with the chance of rain is my water repellent gloves. I totally did not realize that I was going to be holding the umbrella with that glove and it's going to get wet. And then I'm going to try and use my phone with it. Mine are the best gloves to use with a phone. You can type like real fast with these gloves. So I will link those below for you. I do have a video about comfortable walking shoes for Europe over cobblestone roads that I will link for you. But one brand that I love is Echo and they have a lot of waterproof or water repellent shoes that are great, almost like sneakers. So if you're not going in the winter, um, check out that brand. Here are some bags that I was glad I had packed for my Europe trip. Number one, the pouches. I like that they stand up on their own when I am in uh, like my toiletry pouches. They stand up on their own easily. I took my um, toiletry kit that is thin but can bulge really wide so you can smush and squish so many things in it. I'm really glad that I took my little medicine containers. If you don't take a lot of pills, um, it's easy to just take one day and squish it somewhere in your suitcase or take a few of them instead of the entire pill organizer. That helps you save space when packing in only a carry-on suitcase. We stayed at the Marriott in downtown Brussels. This is another bag that's a lanyard type that would be great for underneath your clothes if you do not need to access it when you're shopping and you just wanna use like your little crossbody bag. I know some people like to separate their cash. They like to separate their cards when they're in a crowded tourist area and that might help you. One thing that I did not take, but I actually have it, it's very similar to the Tripped brand. Um, however, this one has locking zippers. I, I've never used this on a trip. However, two of the, uh, no, yes, two of the ladies that we were with had these, okay? The zippers lock, all right? It's, one thing I realized is this bag or the little day pack from, uh, that I have from the Tripped brand, my husband usually carries that for like hiking or touring. One thing that I noticed they could do is they could wear it on the front of their body underneath their coat, but most of the time they wore it over their coat on the back and nobody slashed it or anything. But you're not going to need your cash or your euros a lot. So that's why a bag that has locking uh, zippers is not that inconvenient. I thought it was gonna be really inconvenient, so I've never traveled with that. But I don't know if I'll be able to get it back into this. <laughs> but the straps are really lightweight also. Oh, one very important tip that I learned from this recent trip to Europe is that I should have packed more plugs, or more adapters, okay? Here's why. I packed my converter, which does have 
extra those things, whatever those are called. I packed this because I needed to use my curling iron, so I have to convert the electricity. And then since I was in Europe, this adapter is for Europe, okay? So let's say I'm heating up my curling iron, but I still want to charge my phone real quick before like in between the rainy morning and going out at night. I need to charge my phone. Well, I didn't have another adapter to charge my phone in that outlet. So I found these. These are what I would pack if I was going back to Europe, especially if you have multiple family members. Look how convenient they are. They have the adapter, but then you can fit your charging cord there. You can fit the USB thing or whatever here. You can fit the laptop plug there. You can fit my hearing aid case. It has an, another outlet plug. So I, that would have been so convenient. Just packing one of them would have been so much more helpful for me, but you get two in one pack. One other thing to remember is you want a suitcase with rugged wheels. I have a video that talks about the best carry-on luggage. Level 8 is my favorite brand right now. Their wheels are so rugged. I saw other people who had to walk down the cobblestone road in Belgium to get to their hotel or the train station, especially if you're not going to use an Uber that comes right to your hotel, which is what I did. So be prepared to walk for a while over cobblestone roads. It's rough on your wheels. Okay. Uh, I thought that the two wheeled suitcase would have been better, like my old one, my black one, but, um, this was fine because we had an Uber who dropped us off right at the hotel. All right, if I have left out any other essentials to not forget to pack for Europe, leave them in the comments below and say, hey, if we have not met yet, have a great year.